Francesco Hey everybody, how are you doing? Good, I right, have a guy doing good, everybody else not. I'm assuming it's okay, yeah? For the most part, yeah? Good, yeah. All right, so, uh, we had a slight change of plans today. Uh, we had to, uh, you know, go to an upgrade, uh, first class type deal. Uh, so, you know, we, we allowed him to uh, remain the business side of things, so. Um, we got to come out here, you know, you had to adapt to the last minute and do what you got to do. Now, uh, that being said, uh, you all may have uh, seen uh, a little bit of difference as far as our communication out to uh, everyone. Uh, we're not using uh, the Teams uh, as much, or uh, very rarely, right? So, as I said from the beginning, a lot of this is going to be evolving. This, this particular program is going to be evolving as we go through. You know, with each month we've done something different, we've added something to it, we've, we've changed things up a bit. Um, and that, that's just, you know, the way that goes, it's the first year that uh, we're really, you know, putting a whole lot of effort into it between our uh, own managers. So, um, this particular portion, for those of you who have completed the previous assignment, will receive another. And the same thing with the challenges. As you continue to do so at this point, it'll be at your own pace. So as soon as you send one to me, I'm going to send one right back to you, and I'll send uh, the one that you gave me to your managers, to your mentors, to give you feedback on it. Okay? Um, so it, it's at your own pace. You know, it, it's at this point you kind of decide, hey, how much do I really want to put into my own personal work? How much do I really want to uh, you know, evolve through this? I told you all from the get go, it's going to take a lot of work to get there. Uh, and, and for everybody, it's different. You know, so some of us are doing stuff outside of here, and I'll tell you this too, and, and, and I was thinking about this in front of a couple of others. If you've done something outside of this, or outside of the assignments that, that we've given you, that kind of is established in the same, same route, same kind of lines, then put that, there. you know, speak to that and say, hey, this is what I've done, you know, even outside of this. This is a, the work that I pursued. You know, it, it was different than what you gave me, but oh, that was uh, suffice as well, right? Totally different. Um, speaking of which, moving on to uh, the topic of the day, or the topic of the, this, this class, um, is communication, right? Something big you guys couldn't see. Um, fortunately, we have one of the top managers in the building, uh, top leaders in the building in general, uh, who's going to deliver this. Now, we, we uh, kind of hit the surface level of communication in our last bit. Um, this time, we're going to go a little bit more in depth, right? Uh, and the person who delivered it couldn't have been any, uh, any other person in, in the building, right? Now, we have a lot of talented people here, right? A lot of talent in the building in general. Um, and I don't know how he got to where he is. You know, maybe it's uh, his handsome good looks, uh, his tall stature, <laughs> all of the above, yes? So, uh, but I do know the communication was definitely important. It had to be. He couldn't, he couldn't have gotten to where he is without. So, without further ado, Mr. John Young. I hate to break it to you, uh, but I am also not tall, so... It's all the meatball. I know. It's all relative. It's exactly relative, relative. All right, guys. Uh, so again, I'm going to try to use the microphone. If I can, not use it. I'll try not to. It just kind of depends when the is coming up and make sure you guys can hear me. So... Hey, Walter, can you do me a favor? Let's grab the pointer and move. Oh, we can grab it. That'd be awesome. All right, guys. So... Communication. Uh, just a couple questions. Again, I'm going to be kind of interact with you guys. I'm going to ask you questions. I want to hear your guys' responses. I want you guys to be involved. Because uh, again, the way I communicate is different than you guys communicate. You guys can ask if it's more effective for somebody else in this group in this class. That may be some feedback and help them out kind of involved from there. So I just want to make sure everybody uh, is kind of participating with that. So, first question for you guys What is more difficult? Being an effective speaker or an attentive listener? Speaker. Speaker? What do you think? It's much harder to talk in front of an audience than listen. Okay. Okay. Any other opinions? I would say listen. Listen? Okay. You can miss something by not focusing on something. You're giving the same honor. The answer that you're looking for to be in, so you got to be a real sharp listener. Listen out the key words. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I think both of you are very right on top of that. It kind of depends on the individual. Uh, 
Some people struggle more at the speaking part. Some people struggle more at the listening. I will say, for the most part, we're all designed to look to respond while somebody's still talking. How many times do you catch yourself trying to think of what you're going to say to that person before they even finish saying what you're saying? I, I've done it. I still do it from time to time. So, again, that's where I think the attentive listener is probably where it's more difficult, but that depends on the individual. Some people have more of an issue saying I'm speaking. Second question, what has more value, assertive speaking or engaged listening? Really push it through. 
No, she would buy the mortgage, Mulder worked with her, kind of pushed this out and helped her kind of do that development uh, and push it through. So again, big really changes that are possible as well. You can't be negative all the time. Um, you have to be able to really push the small changes positively over time. The next is going to be trust. So it is vital you gain trust uh, as if you're lacking this. Really important for you to be true. So think about the time you guys had a leader that maybe wasn't your favorite leader or somebody who struggled as your leader. Uh, did you trust them? I know I had a couple leaders I did not trust. And what happened there was they would tell me something, but I would interpret it differently because I did not trust what they were telling me. So instead of them saying this, I thought it was that. So you have to be able to kind of gain that trust with your associates uh, and really work with them to develop and again, when you've got positive change, you just build up that trust. Communication skills. So we're going over about eight skills. Uh, again, this is kind of things that are going to kind of help you uh, actually speak, and then we're going to kind of looking at different ways of how you do to better that with active listening and kind of getting better on that. So first one. Adaptive communication style. So, everybody has different communication style. There are different people who react in different. If you're trying to talk to somebody the exact same way to every single individual, you're going to lose a lot of people. Just because of the fact that you're not adapting to how that person receives communication and interprets it. Your leadership style is to say what's authoritative. And let's say you have a clear vision. And you are relying on, hey, this is what we need to do as a team to get this goal. But what if you're working with somebody who is more of, hey, um, I want to be involved in the process. I want to be somebody who, you know, understands really why we're doing it and how we can better the process. If you just tell somebody to go and do something as opposed to involving them, you're going to lose that associate and lose their trust. So just make sure you're adapting your communication style based off of who you're speaking. Active listening. Uh, this is a big one. And I want this not to be construed. Active listening is not just nodding and looking at them. It's actively listening and hearing what they're saying. So being free of distractions, being in a space where you can actually listen and talk through those things. Uh, you know, am I the best at it? No. I can pull from meeting to meeting. I'm not on the floor, off the floor, you pull here and there. There's some times where associate pulls me, I got 12 other things going on, and I don't do, I do a great job of actively listening to associates. So, again, it's just making sure you're thinking through that and making sure if somebody needs to speak to you, take that time, stop, but everything else inside for a second and focus on what they're saying. <clears throat> because if you're engaging with an associate and you're actively listening and you're repeating back what they're telling you, being engaged, asking questions, those sort of things, as an associate, talk to your leader. What are you more likely to do in that scenario? If it goes well, had a great idea, had a great conversation with that leader, what are you more likely to do if you have another? Go back to that leader, right? If they just so, okay, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, I'll get you later, and then walk off, you're gonna be probably be pretty discouraged at that point, right? Just make sure you're taking that forefront. Even those small things can really impact how you're talking or how you're interacting with your associate. Transparency. I think this is a big one as leaders that we struggle with, and I don't know why. I think we have to be as transparent as we can. Uh, you know, you could ask Brent, Mike, Eric on our side uh, for Pete coming up here. I told you guys what two months ago about mandatory overtime, those sort of things. Again, it's just those little things that you can do for your associates to help them know, like, hey, when this is when we have this information. This is what we think is going to happen. Is that necessarily always going to be the plan and how it's all going to work out? No. Again, just be transparent about that. Say, hey, this is what we're thinking is going to happen, but things could change and be prepared to adjust and a change accordingly. So, again, be transparent with your associates, especially if uh, that's a leadership role, whether it's lead, AM role. Be transparent, make sure you are being honest with your associates. Clarity. So, <laughs> this is a big one. Paul's hand in hand with transparency. But you gotta make sure you're just putting out the right message. Transparency, you're putting out there telling them, hey, it's what we think. 
But make sure they understand they're clear with the message and what direction you go. If you decide to say something and do something, but it's unclear message on the direction of why you're doing it. If I say, hey, we're gonna put everybody in this area and do this, even though we normally don't do that, and nobody has any idea why, there's gonna be some confusion there and some like pushback of why are we doing this. So let's make sure you're clear of why you're doing something so your associates don't lose that trust and kind of understand the process. So ability to open, ask, uh, open uh, to ask open-ended questions. So this one is kind of something you gotta get in the habit of. Always just ask a question off of their question. Uh, or an answer. There should never be anything where you're saying, uh, do you want to go left or right? Up or down? If you give that that, that's only gonna give you one more answer. Uh, let's say for example, an associate asks you, uh, you know, they're having trouble with their performance and they don't understand um, why their performance is slow, maybe it's because they have excessive break time or whatever. And you ask them, well, do you think the breaks are too short? Yes. Okay. You're not really going to get any response there, of course they're going to say that. But if you ask a question like, hey, I see you have multiple break times here, uh, and it looks like a lot of them are coming in between your breaks, you know, why is that happening? Do you, do you, is there something that's happening on the floor? And then that's where they're like, oh yeah, you know, normally at this time, um, the put away drivers get really busy, the floor gets backed up, whatever it be. Then you're going and attacking the solution, not getting that surface level answer. It's not really going to give you the details to fix what the problem is. So just make sure you ask those open questions. It's really deep and high. So I think this is. Uh, Probably the biggest one that you can either gain or lose somebody on uh, is empathy. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you're going to be successful, you have to be empathetic to your associates and what's going on. Better understanding the associates' feelings and making sure the value of her is the biggest and most important thing we can do as leaders. If somebody comes up to me and is talking to me, or even older, or pretty much any leader in the building. And they come up and they go, hey, I gotta get out of here, my kid, uh, can I pick up for school for sick, or whatever it is. If I just go, yeah, but I need you to work. Like, we got you to get out the door, you know, you need to stay here and work. How do you think that's gonna be perceived by you as a system? Like, I don't care, right? Like, I'm just a big jerk on the planet. Make sure you guys understand that you have to be able to understand that there are lives outside this building. At the end of the day, we're only here for 10 hours a day. Everybody goes home to the family, everybody goes home and goes to other things outside. Maybe it's another job. Uh, you have to understand that. See me on the floor, I go here, run here, go here, do that. A lot of times I don't open my body language up for that interaction when somebody comes up. It's a bad fault on my own, but again, I'm not perfect. I gotta get better too. Make sure you're receptive to those things. Make sure you're looking at nonverbal cues. About 96% of interaction with somebody is in nonverbal cues. If they're comfortable, if they're able to talk, they speak to you. That's awesome. But if they're kind of comfortable with being around the bush, can't really get into the heart of the issue if you're not looking at that body language and asking those follow-up questions. So just make sure you have open body language and then you're also looking at other people's body language and you're seeing it too. Right. Last one here. So receiving and implementing feedback. So I think this one's huge. Uh, you know, a lot of times we get wrapped up and everything's feedback is bad. Uh, honestly, I love it. Feedback's probably one of the things that has helped me both in my career and the advance as much as I have. Because without the feedback from a lot of the great leaders I've had in the past, or currently have, I wouldn't get better at what I'm struggling with. Uh, you know, so be open to feedback. 
you know, just because somebody tells you you're struggling or something, or you're not doing great at something, that doesn't mean you're doing terrible. That just means you have an area to improve. We all have them. I have them. Holder has them. You now have been in the industry for, what, 18 years? Uh, around that, around that, maybe times two. Times two. So, Alan has been in the industry a very long time, but I'm sure Alan still can use some feedback to improve and get better. Just like the rest. Whether it's your first day here, or you know, 18 plus years old, whatever it may be. Uh, just make sure you guys are receiving that. But again, if you're receiving feedback, use it. You're being told that feedback for a reason. Don't just say, like, oh, okay, and then move on and not do anything to change it or get better. That's, that's how a lot of leaders kind of scale in the second position. They'll say, oh yeah, I'm struggling with this. Then they don't attack anything. They don't do anything to help them improve and get better at it. So, so make sure you guys are using that feedback to develop and get yourself where you need to. And if you need help with that feedback, give it to another leader. Say, hey, they say I'm starting with this. What do you suggest? I know you're good at this. How do I do that? So, uh, those are some things you can help me with. All right, so, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a quick little exercise here. You each have two pieces of paper in front of you. Uh, you each have to pull those out for me. So, we are going to do a good-thinking drawing activity. So, based on what I do, I'm going to give you guys two sets of directions. We're going to draw something the first time, and draw something the second time. What I'm going to you to draw is the exact same thing. But how I'm going to communicate that to you is going to be completely different. So, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll go with the first. Alright, so step one, draw a square. Step two, draw a triangle. Step three, draw two squares in the first square unit. Step four, draw a rectangle in the first square unit. Step five, draw a plus sign in the two squares. Step five, draw a plus sign in the two squares. Step six, draw a circle in the rectangle. Dividing the 
Step six, now you can make a door. Your door should be a rectangle starting at the bottom middle of your house square. You will, uh, you will want it to be in the shape and size of the door of a normally fit your house. Step seven, draw a circle on the left hand side, or left middle side of your door. This will be your door handle. Step eight, appreciate your views, box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, just kind of recap. How was that experience? Different. I do a little quick, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do you hear? Yeah, more detailed instructions, the better. Now, on the second one, this is a curiosity. How many of you started drawing before I finished speaking? That, that active listening, guys. That's where you gotta stop. Make sure we hear everything. Because I'm pretty sure you guys, all, almost all of you, messed up the front when I said two quarters over the edge. I kind of put that in there. Alright, uh, so what was different from the first time to the second time, other than me knowing you? Did you guys know what you were making the first time? <laughs> he actually had it. Oh, he did? Yeah, he was the only one who had the full house. Nice. I mean, he could have put a boss in there. Like, so, but again, one person in the whole group, that first round, kind of understood the direction of what was going on. There was no player, there was no transparency. There was no clear direction of where you guys were going. But when I told you the second time you guys brought a house, you guys were able to, like, oh, I'm going square, so I need to make sure there's no space, no room. Uh, I'm sure it looks that day different. Obviously, it should look something like this by the end. But again, what is it like that? Not perfect, right? I could have given more details. I could have provided more. I could have given you dimensions. I could have given you the tools that you need to see. But I couldn't do that if I didn't get your guys' feedback. If I didn't make sure I was thorough. These are the things, guys. It's, it's very small. It's not a lot. But these are the things that are going to get better and help improve the leader. Clear, effective communication. Make sure you're following through with those things. So yeah, you keep your houses, whatever you want to do with those, or you can leave them and we'll throw them away. But uh, yeah, guys, again, having a sense of direction, knowing the end goal is part of it. It's the very first part. And then being clear and decide so what you did. The first time I had only six steps, the last time it was like eight or nine. Again, sometimes you gotta be more thorough to make sure you get where you want to get to. So Alright, listening to leadership. So the importance of listening to leadership is crucial for a team performance. I'm going to break my neck. A leader who is an authority and judgmental may cause their employees to be afraid of them and unwilling to communicate. This can lead to team dysfunction and poor productivity. Uh, have you guys ever had any manager? Who had bad listening skills? Like honestly, has anybody ever had a manager where you just you work and you get talking? How did you guys get? What was? Well, because you should tell them something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because you are legal, but you handle information and give that information. It's going to be different than how it's interpreted to you. So make sure you're getting to know your business. So then later we'll figure this out. If I didn't know who Eric was, if I didn't know Eric liked doing this on the weekend, doing that, you know, we could joke, whatever. But maybe Brent's a little more stern and just wants the facts. You know, just get out of here and move on. You got to communicate that in different ways. So, yes, we have dirt. Any of the solid information that you have out there, unless it's just straight, you don't listen, don't say anything to me, you do what I say type thing. Not just that thing, you can adjust what you're doing to fit in based style and how to do So. Alright, so listening. You know, we touch base on it a little bit. We you know, did the, the house presentation. Actually, listening to me, you know, to listen thoroughly is huge. If you're not listening to everything you're saying, that would be a beautiful saying, you're going to lose a lot of the message you're trying to put out there. Just like when I went through and told you guys to draw that roof. A lot of you saw you starting to draw that roof already, but then didn't really listen to everything and all the details that were written there. So, Kind of so intense how we do that. So developing your active listening skills. So a lot of times we have to learn this is what we You know, as we go through, it's always been, you know, either say yes ma'am, yes sir, or just literally not really paying attention at all, just trying to find a response. Because a lot of us get defensive, so if there's something someone asks us a question, we feel like we have to defend ourselves almost the way. But we gotta make sure we're being able to listen and understand. Uh, especially if an associate's come up with a concern or problem, that's when you really need to be the most engaged. We need to listen with intent uh, rather than imply, so we're implying to understand. So make sure you're listening intently, ready to reply after you've understood everything they're saying. Uh, you have to kind of shift your focus with that and not just think about, hey, what am I going to say to this? What am I gonna Sit there and actively listen to what the words the person is saying to you. Take that information in and then respond. It's okay to take a second to think about it. Uh, we'll get to a couple other things in here that'll kind of help you uh, develop that and kind of uh, get to that next thing. And also paying attention gives you that ability to really look at somebody's body language. Um, you know, we talked about it earlier, have that open body language to see. If you're not looking or paying attention and really focusing on what the person is saying and doing, you, you may miss what they're trying to actually say. They may be nervous and uneasy, you know, like, hey, you know, there's something else going on. Like, can you kind of deep dive into that a little bit? So this is a big one. Um, this is also kind of a, it depends on the person type scenario as well. Um, making eye contact um, generally builds trust. Uh, generally shows somebody you really are listening to them and building up that, that focus. Um, However, that can sometimes, for certain people, be construed as like intimidation and, you know, it makes it feel uneasy. Like so, you got him. You got to know your associates. You got to be able to speak to them and have them understand that and see that body language. If you're making eye contact with them and their body language is starting to kind of, you know, back up and kind of stand offish, you may need to adjust how you're looking at them, talking to them, uh, those sort of things. So, uh, Next one is ask the right questions. So the biggest one in this is not just asking questions. If somebody goes, um, you know, I think our break should be longer because I don't feel like I have enough time to eat, yada yada yada. And you ask the question, well, why don't you eat quicker? Maybe not the right question. At, be a listener, like understand and get to the root cause. You know, why why do you feel that the breaks aren't long enough? You know, it's, it's 25 minutes, like, well, what's going on? Well, like, I call, you know, my wife, her break time, I got this and that, you know, and I'm struggling with this, uh, I just kind of need extra time. Okay, well, you know, we can change X, Y, and Z to maybe make that adjustment, kind of help you out. Uh, whether it's burn shift or whatever, uh, you get more of the root cause, you're asking more powerful questions. So, again, Why they're struggling. So this is a big one, guys. Uh, having an open mind. Uh, 
how many of us have been dead set and you have an idea, you have this greatest idea ever, nothing's gonna top this idea, and then somebody comes up with a different idea, and you're like, no, we're gonna do this idea because it's my idea and I like it. I've been, I mean, we all have. Especially if we had siblings, I know we would. Uh, we would fight to the death to be right and be the best idea in that scenario. So, but again, guys, you gotta have an open mind. Especially in leadership, everyone comes from different perspectives, different walks of life. Somebody that you, you know, just started with could have multiple different ideas that, from their past, that could be implemented into your business to help you all improve and get better. You gotta make sure you're going to have an open mind. We've all not seen and done anything. We have all got a ton to learn and grow from as we continue to move on. Make sure you're being, going into an open mind, not having those dead set ideas. Again, I struggle with dead times. Sometimes I'm like, this is a great idea, we should do it. But I also have to be open to other ideas and other interpretations, which as I've gone through my career, I've gotten a lot better. When I was younger in my career, I was much more subtle. I was much more stuck in, no, we're doing it this way, let's go. Like, and, I, and it came from a good place. You know, it wasn't that I was trying to be negative or aggressive or anything like that. It was just, I wanted this to get better. I wanted this to improve. But I got so focused on my idea, my objective, I didn't about our objective, our idea. So, you got to make sure you're just going in there with no mind really well. So, developing your emotional intelligence. Obviously, we've talked about this uh, quite a bit. And the other sections. So we'll touch a lot on this a ton. But again, to be aware and understanding your emotions and how you're reacting to things. Especially that little bit of If somebody says something like, you know, maybe somebody that, you know, Brent is working on some hip parking project for us, right? Well, I did the original hip parking project. Well, Brent came up and started talking about the hip, uh, hip, rock, uh, hip parking project and said, well, this is kind of stupid on the first day and blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> but I didn't take it, I didn't take it as a lie. I didn't take it as he was telling me my ideas were bad and terrible. Brent had no idea that I had done that project when we first launched. He had no idea that I had developed it. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing that he did. And as soon as I told him that, it was just in his eyes. So I was like, I mean, it was good for most of the <laughs> But no, it's those sort of things, actually. Like, don't get so attached to things. Don't let your emotions control what you're doing. And again, get all the information before you maybe make a, like, hey, you should have done that, said that. Again, Brent didn't know that that problem was bad. Brent didn't mean anything by it. He was just trying to make the process better. I knew that when it's talking to me, but it's funny to see that. But again, just keep developing that emotional intelligence that you have to for. So minimize distractions. This is a big one, guys. We live in a telephone computer age where almost everything we do, I see him back there on his laptop right now. Like, we're, I mean, say clicker on a laptop right now. There are so many things to distract us, there are so many things that can keep us from being focused and intended on that conversation. I'm at fault all the time. I'll be sitting there updating this document, whatever somebody's talking to me. I need to stop sometimes. Just turn, focus, listen. Take away those distractions. Close your laptop, put your phone down, whatever it may be, that scenario that's distracting you. Or focus on the associate, focus on the conversation. Now, is that every conversation? No. Like, the associate comes up, like, hey, where do we go to next? Hey, I need to go over here. Cool, you guys move on. But if it's a conversation where they're actually you know, bringing concern, or maybe suggestion, those sort of things. But the distraction is way to focus on that associate. Especially if it's a difficult conversation for them to have, definitely make sure you're focused on that. If it's a, you know, hey, I need to really, really talk to you, it's very important. Cool, let me put this down. So, what's up? What do you need from me? Well, make sure you guys really focus on that as you're talking to So reflect that. Uh, so this is one big thing that can kind of really help you when you're after listening and really getting better. Repeat back what the person said to you. You know, if they're like, hey, you know, I just feel really frustrated, because um, I'm not hitting raid, because you keep telling me I'm too many break times, and I just don't know what to do. Okay, so, just what I'm not sure I understand, right here is you're just kind of upset and frustrated, you don't quite understand why you're not hitting raid, and you feel like you don't quite understand how the breaks are affected. Is that right? Yes, okay. 
then you kind of continue on from there. But being able to reflect back and continue that, that lets you associate know as well if you're listening. You're not just sitting there staring at them going, yeah, just do better at UPH and then you walk away. Like, mm -hmm. what's that going to give you? Yeah. You're going to completely shut down and not care. So just make sure you guys are really attentively focusing on them and then reflect that back and just want to make sure it's clear. Especially if there's something they're telling you and you just really have no idea what they're trying to say. Like, hey, this way of understanding is this right or wrong? I want to make sure it's clear so I can do the right way to do that. So. All right, so last one, give yourself breathing. Uh, you know, I think this is one where we all kind of struggle we get kind of wrapped up in the job and wrapped up doing, you know, 8,000 different things. Whether it's, you know, Hey, we're getting close to that time, gotta get this done, uh, we've got 30 MPRs going out, whatever it may be. We get so wrapped up in things that we don't just take a second to go, okay, let me focus on the task at hand, and then I'll get back all the other stuff in a second. It's okay to take a second, reflect yourself, and be okay with the fact that, hey, I did not do good in that conversation. There's been plenty of times where I walked away from a conversation going, I screwed that up. I did not do a good job. I need to do a better job communicating and divulging that associate going forward. But that's okay. If you recognize these things, have a conversation with that person. Think, hey, you know, I brought the youngest, again, transparency. Hey, I didn't handle the conversation well. I did not do a good job. Uh, you know, good conversation actually. My thing. You know, last class I talked about how.
Yeah, I, I think that's perfect. I mean, paraphrasing, man, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, but listen to understand, not necessarily to respond. And it's okay that, that you don't respond. It's okay to say, let me give, is it okay if I give this some thought and come back to you? Rather than feeling pressured to have to give an answer right away because if they're asking you for a response, and sometimes they may not be, maybe they're just venting. And they, they want to make sure, you know, they, they just want someone to listen to what they've got to say. So listen to understand the intent of what they're asking of you and realize it's okay if you don't have a response right away. And don't be afraid to take notes if you, if you need to and repeat it back to them and say, hey, just to make sure that I understand this is, this is what you're looking for or, or things that you're asking of me. So you can do your best job. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, so acknowledgement, acknowledgement of their feelings, acknowledgement of what they've said, uh, acknowledgement of you know, the direction they're going, as opposed to responding with your own thoughts. Um, I, I would say that's, that's one of the biggest ones. Um, so the paraphrasing, the acknowledgement, the coming back saying, hey, you know, let, let me think out a little bit, or just plain just listening, just to listen. Because like you said, you may be able to. So there, there's four of the biggest ones. And like, like I talked about in there, transparency. You don't know, be honest. It's okay not to know. It's okay not to have that answer right readily available. I tell you guys that all the time when you guys ask me a question. Hey, I don't know, but let me find out for you. And what do I normally do? Follow back up, make sure you guys find out that answer and understand what that answer is. So again, just make sure you have that follow through. The follow through, the follow through. Follow through is the big thing. You can't you can't say, hey, I'll get back with you and you never thought you would. Walk past me three, four times to the end of the day and they see him the next day and don't say nothing. You didn't say nothing. So yeah, the follow through is the most important. Yeah, there's there's been plenty of times, I'm sure Alan, Mulder, Andrew, there's been plenty of times you'll forget to follow up. But eventually at some point you will realize you forgot to follow up. One they day. will either let you know. Once you look at them long enough. Yeah, yeah. Either, either they will let you know, or it will hit like a light bulb in your brain, going, "Oh crap!" At that point, again, be honest, guys. Hey, Brent, I dropped the ball. I know you asked this question a week ago, and I never got you the response. That's my fault. But here's the answer you were looking for. I'll do better in the future as a leader. Make sure I'm getting back to you in time with that. Nine times out of ten, that's Okay, you know, at least they didn't completely forget about me. If they come out to you saying, hey, did you ever get my question? Hey, you know what? I did not get your answer to your question. I dropped the ball. That's on me. I'll get that answer to you by the end of the day today, I promise. You. But that's where you absolutely got to make sure you fall through. Okay. If you drop the ball on that one, that's you you're going to lose that. You are going You are going to lose that associate right there and there if you do not fall through at that one. So, okay, guys, just make sure you are... Transparent, follow through, you know, revert back to what you're saying to them, those sort of things. And, and Mr. John, what you said about our incident, mm -hmm. I don't think you come to tell me that I had to work, I don't think it would have really been such a problem if you would have told me before the meeting. That's what I said, because, that's what I pulled yeah, up. If I you didn't tell me before the meeting, I would have already knew. Yep. Like you said, throw the paper on me and I'm looking at it. You did. And I'm not asking what we talking about. So yeah. Yep. yeah. And that made me look bad as a leader in the mind. And that's not what I want to true. But again. I didn't think you cared, Mr. See? He didn't think I cared. But I think Mike knows, because our follow-up conversations, I do care. It just got by me. And guys, it's going to happen. You have a million different things going on. You know, Jen and QA, how many things do you have going on in a day? 87. Yeah, such. I mean, everybody in here, you have a million different things. Eric's got... 20 trailers is moving in and out a day over in shipping. He's got the floor he's trying to keep clear. We all have things that are going on throughout our day. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to forget something. And it's okay. Just be honest, be transparent. Don't don't be that person. Well, I just don't remember. Not yet. Like, you remember those conversations. Guys. Just make sure you're transparent. And sometimes you will just like, hey, refresh my memory of what we're talking about again. And just so you can kind of get a better understanding of what they're talking about. So, I know you had a question. <coughs> Can you give us like some advice how to communicate with difficult people? Like difficult people that is gonna give you an attitude, even when you are professional, kind, easy. Yes. <clears throat> That's a difficult one. 
Uh, there's no, I, I, I wish I could sit up here and tell you, hey, this is the magic cheat code to deal with a difficult person. Uh, there's never really the perfect way to deal with a perfect person. But from at least my experience, uh, hopefully Mulder and Alan can vouch for this as well, a lot of times if somebody's being difficult, it's because they don't understand. They literally just don't have the clarity of understanding why we are doing something and what's the point and purpose of it. Nine times out of ten, if your mom told you to go clean your room, what'd you do? Why? Why don't you clean my room? Because I told you. How's that response going? Well, you did it because you're your mom. But, and you'll do it because it's your boss, but what did that kind of make you do? Yeah, you're, you're saying mumbling uh, words about your mom, you're in the press, you're on your room. Be transparent. Hey, I need your room clean because your Aunt Cecilia is coming in and the room needs to be cleaned so she can stay in there for you. Okay. Again, make sure that they understand everything that's going through. And also, let them vent if there's a situation that's going on. They're just being like, hey, I don't understand this. Let them get that out. A lot of times when somebody is frustrated or being difficult, it's because one, they don't feel heard, or two, they just don't understand. <clears throat> So try and get that clarity. Ask those open-ended questions. Hey, you know, I can see you're having some, you know, struggles with the process. What, what's going on? Like, what's holding you up? Is there something you're not understanding? Like, do you, do you know why we're doing this? Kind of build up that, you know, direction kind of help you flow. I don't know if you guys have any other kind of suggestions on dealing with difficult people. Uh, I don't know if we have another two, three hours for that. Uh. <laughs> we got six minutes, so. <laughs> Do you have anything short? Short? Um, yeah, you said the main points. Uh, another thing that you can do too is kind of mirror them a little bit. Um, a lot of times people prefer one others who have a similar uh, personality type, uh, similar demeanor, similar uh, uh, stance, uh, expressions, all that. Uh, the person that they relate to more, they will listen to more. Uh, the second part of that, some people, they appear difficult because maybe they're, they're brash, they're straightforward, they're direct, and it, it just seems like, you know, they're just hard. Um, but it also may be that just might be their personality. You know, they may just be that kind of direct, and it just seems like they're difficult to do. Um, and a lot of times, those are your best people because there's no fluff around them. They're very direct, like, I hate this. And I hate this because of X, Y, Z. Okay, well, X, Y sucks. I get it. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. But let's see what we can do about that. And then once you kind of work with a little bit on that one particular part, they will get better. So, yeah. Just to... my, my advice would be to remain in control in those situations. Control those conversations. If it starts to get out of control, Shut it down. Uh, if, if you have the, the, the ability to choose where you have those conversations, choose a neutral area where it's away from distractions, where it's away, where it's away from things that will, will amplify that that feeling and that, uh, that, that potential animosity or, or the energy that that person may bring about. And I'll give you an example. If uh, Mike's talking about days off. If we're having a, a start of shift meeting and we've got 30 people around and Mike says, hey, I'm just seeing this, I don't want to work, and I have no idea the conversations, but he says something to the effect of, hey, I don't want to work Sunday, you've got me working Sunday. What's the chance that other people within that, the 29 other people that's standing around that area go, hey, that's right, and I don't want to work and I'm not working Saturday, you can forget that. But if that conversation were different and Mike says, hey, I've got, I've got a question about my overtime schedule, and, and John or whomever says, Mike, that's great, give me just a minute, let's finish our meeting, and then you and I will have a one-on-one, -on -one. let's see if we can figure out that problem. And then they can work through that together. So maintain control. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is reflect inward. Sometimes the folks uh, with, with some of the personality traits, like Matt had mentioned a few minutes ago, maybe we're the ones that's amplifying things because they're challenging us to think differently. Maybe they think 
uh, in a way, or they perceive something that we didn't think about or that takes us out of our comfort zone, and maybe it's us that's, that's amplifying things up. So take some of that ownership yourself. Any other questions, guys? Or do you have any follow-up questions on that? Are you good? Yeah, if you've ever read those situations, by all means, pull one of us. We'll help you walk through. If it's more of a specific situation you need help with, pull one of us. We'll be able to walk you through. See, see, I will say, it's just some people you just can't help. Yeah, yeah. I know. they just really like just, just the bad out of the box. Mm -hmm. When you run call one of them, like I gotta say, stay in control of the situation. Tough love, and this, you know. Biggest thing, too, is be consistent and equal with everybody. Just because they're difficult doesn't mean you give them the worst jobs. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets the same jobs, everybody gets the same treatment, everybody's held to the same expectation. So when you start veering off that track of, hey, they're always doing this job, which everybody hates, then, they go to you. <laughs> then you're gonna start getting into that, well, you're just picking on me, and it's gonna escalate more. Just make sure you're fair and consistent with that. All right, anything else, guys? Boulder, do you have any other announcements for the class? Yes.
I feel like I handled it a little bit better. I felt like I, I, I listened a little bit better. I, I listened a little bit differently this time. I listened it from a different perspective. I didn't see it just from mine. I saw it from theirs as well. And I saw different things. Take those little those little vectors right there. One of the challenges that we did um, uh, yeah, it was about a month, two months old, something like that, was uh, change up your morning routine. Right? Because we wanted to win a battle that early in the morning. Instead of doing what we felt like doing, maybe sleeping in an extra 15 minutes, you know, maybe just kind of sitting there and chilling for a bit and wait until the last second to get out the door, doing something different. You know, winning that little challenge, whether it's uh, reading or doing some push ups or some squats or something like that. Is, that, is, is 25 push ups in the morning going to make a huge difference in your physique? No, it's not. But if you do it each and every single day, single day you make that conscious decision every single day. Regardless of what you're feeling like, that absolutely will make a difference in you even more. Because it helps you win those little battles. So take those into consideration. Okay? Don't, don't, don't forget about those. When you're feeling down on yourself, you're not seeing that you're the kind of changes that you want to see in the big picture. You're like, I'm, I'm not wearing a different color vest. I'm not making any more money. I, I, I don't have any more time. You know, I, I'm doing all this extra stuff, but I'm not seeing the kind of changes I want to see. Remember those small battles that you won. Time and time again. Those add up. You are improving. You are getting better. You are moving forward. You're constantly seeking out knowledge. You're constantly asking others, hey, hey, is there something I can do differently? Is there something I can do to improve? Don't get too down on yourself. Don't let you know, don't beat yourself up too much. Save some of that for us. <laughs> right? Give, give, give us some opportunity for some of um, And this is the last thing. Um, again, with this uh, next two months, uh, since we won't be having the classes, um, your mentors will still be there. They, they, they can still meet with you, you can still talk to them, you can message them, whatever it is. You can still do those assignments, you can still do those challenges. You can still go up to my ask them, hey, this is the situation I'm dealing with. This is how I'm thinking about dealing with it. What do you think? What's your idea on it? Hey, I got this project that I want to do. How do you think I should go about it? This is my current idea. What way can I improve on this? Please feel free to come up to us and any one of us. And even if, say, you're not, I'm not your mentor, but you can come up to me and ask me. Right? You can come up and ask John or Alan, any of us. Be more than welcome to help you out. Okay? So don't, don't hold back just because we're not having uh, access for these next two months. Keep moving forward. It may not always be pretty. It may not always be the, the, you know, the results you're looking for. Keep moving forward as much as you can. Okay? Um, other than that, that is all that I have. Y'all have any questions for me in regards to the challenges, the assignments? Um, you know, how class is moving forward next year, any ideas whatsoever that you would like to see differently? Yes, no, sound? Okay. If you do, please feel free to hit us up. Our teams, message, email, whatever it is. Okay. Other than that, that is all that I have. And I'll enjoy the rest of your Hey, quick question, who would raise hands? Prefer it out here or in there? <laughs>